Hello everyone and thanks for tuning into the Financial Investor channel. My name is Brent and today we're going to be doing stocks with X dividends next week. So every Wednesday on this channel we go over stocks that have X dividends next week. Why is the X dividend date important? Well, if you own the stock on the day of the X dividend, that means you have purchased it the day prior or any time before the day prior and held it on the X dividend date, you are now eligible for the dividend payment which comes out usually in a week or sometimes up to a month or two. So some investors, they like to look for some value buying opportunities, buy into stocks that are going to, you know, they have more upside than downside. They can capture capital appreciation and the dividend payout when uh, on the ex-dividend, they, they capture the ability to get that dividend payment in the future. So in this video, we're going to be using dividend.com, using the DARS, with, which is the Dividend Advantage Rating System. They rate stocks based on this criteria here. You can pause the video, read over these um, bullet points right here. They basically measure it by relative strength, yield attractiveness, reliability, uptrend, and stock growth. It then gives it a rating of 4.6 to 5 for highly recommended and 3.6 to 4.5 for recommended. I normally grab all stocks that have a rating of 3.6 and above and screen those stocks. Now, what do we screen them for? Well, let's go take a look at these stocks real quick. So here, I punched in the dates for next week. That is August 5th through August 11th. I searched for some common shares, sold them by the DARS rating system. So here, I copied every single stock from a rating of 5.0 all the way down to the last 3.6, which is a recommended stock, put them into my spreadsheet, Originally here, I had much more. I had, let's go ahead and, well, I had already copied them, but there used to be, I guess I have to go backwards here. I've already done this little screening process, and then I went over what stocks I actually recognized. So here, we originally started with 84 stocks, and the very first thing I like to knock them off for is a dividend yield under 1.5. All those stocks are gone. I use 1.5 because the the S&P 500 dividend yield is 1.8. I ran down to 1.5. That way I can include some dividend stocks that are growth centric, um, such as Citibank, Apple, Nvidia, Activision, Blizzard. These are growth dividend stocks, meaning that they have a lot of growth potential. They may not pay out a whole lot, but they normally increase their dividend by a very nice double digit number. Plus you're getting those capital appreciations. So it's kind of a win-win there. So I knocked off from 83 stocks down to 80 or 54 stocks. And then I went through my list here and I, all the stocks that I recognized were in bold. So of the 54 remaining stocks, I went down this list and I recognized eight of them. Well, 54 is about half of 100, so we multiply eight by two, and that's 16. So 16% 16 of the stocks here are ones that I've recognized. That's nearly 84% of the other stocks here. I have no idea what they do, or they wouldn't be mentioned in really any media outlets. You know, what's on the media today? Facebook, Netflix, the FANG stocks, you know, you're gonna get Apple, Amazon, uh, Netflix, Google, Microsoft, those are some of the most common names that are talked about with investors just in general. So by doing this process every single week, I'm getting exposure to stocks that I wouldn't otherwise hear or really investigate you know, on my own or through media outlets. So I then put these stocks into my screen right here and I continued knocking a few of the names out. So we started with 54. The very first thing, of course, we screened them for was a yield above 1.5. I kept those. Next, I knocked stocks off that had a P.E. ratio higher than 25. The current S&P 500 average is 24.4. I rounded up to 25 and knocked off a bunch of stocks here that had a P.E. ratio higher than 25. So all of these stocks here that are remaining all have div or P.E. ratios of 20 three and under so the highest is that a 23.19 which is investors bank corp and the lowest here is washington federal and apple right there in the middle at the 18.89 now after i screen them for a p.e ratio under 25 i then wanted to make sure that all of these stocks 
their future outlook, which means, you know, their fu forward PE was going to be lower, meaning that their earnings are expected to grow. They're becoming more profitable. So here we want that forward PE to be less. So we want that orange on the bottom. So I went through and knocked off all the stocks there that had possibly, a, you know, a forward PE, which was higher, which would mean that going forward, they're expected to decline in their earnings. And we don't want that. So that was knocked off. Next, once we had yields, we had PE, we had future PE looking profitable, we went and looked at the revenue, net income, and free cash flow. We looked at both 10-year and 5-year here. We wanted to see that these companies were growing. Columbia Banking here, double digits in revenue, huge digits in net income, 1.79 thousand percent increase over the last 10 years. Double digits in revenue and free cash flow year over year. Here we are. We have BB&T, Apple, triple digits across the board. That's huge increases there in revenue, net income, and free cash flow. Washington, we have Investors Bank Corp, triple digits as well. Skyworks Solutions, that's a very common stock that I've seen other investors buying into there. People Bank Corp, Great Western Bank Corp, and Brookline Bank Corp. So those are the stocks that made it through our tenure. Uh, we had a couple other ones that made it through the tenure, but then we took it down, looked at the last five five years. So we've came out of that financial rut over the last five years. We wanted to make sure that the companies had been moving profitable as of 2013. So again, we went through the list. Everything looking solid there. Many of these stocks in double digits over just the last five years. So that's very healthy. At least say 1% or higher in revenue, net income, free cash flow, some even higher than that. So, all those had passed the list. So, by then, we were down to just these stocks. These stocks made it through yields over 1.5, price to earnings ratio less than 25, future PE is expected to decline, meaning the earnings are expected to climb, their revenue, net income, free cash flow over the next five or over the last five or ten years is moving up in a nice, healthy um, up up uh, uptrend, and that's where we are. So from this point on, we're going to be taking a look now at the price, the current dividend yield. Are they at a good value buy? Is the yield trading above the current price? Take a look if the price is above or below the 250-day moving average. Take a look at their price of book, price of sales, and their return on invested capital and their cash conversion cycle. Now, we have a whole bunch of financial institutions here, so they're not going to have any sort of cash conversion cycle. They're not churning out any products and turning uh, investors' money into products and or cash flow of products and services. So financials will not have any sort of cash conversion cycle. So here, I could select all of these different financials and they will have them. Whereas if I were to select Apple and Skyworks Solutions, these are gonna have uh, some numbers in there. But let's go ahead and start with price and dividend yield for the year. Just take a look at a few of these stocks here, data format, go back to the original. So here, Columbia, I have all these stocks. So here on the left-hand side, these are all sorted by stocks that have been paying out dividends for the longest time or have had dividend growth for the most amount of years. So Columbia Bank is in number one place because it has dividend growth for seven years. Since back in 2011, has a healthy payout ratio of 40.6. Financials have recently been a little bit deregulated so they can loan out and increase dividends. They don't have to carry as much cash on hand uh, as far as, you know, the on the books. So they're able to increase their dividends. You're going to see yields spike up on a lot of these financials. So here, this is showing dividend yield of 2.54. This is 2.25. This is because recently they increased their dividend from $0.22 cents to $0.26. Cents. So if we scroll down here, we'll see that they increased it from 22 to 26 just within the last few quarters. And this hasn't really updated here to show that. The next dividend date is on August 7th. That is next Tuesday. So you'd have to buy the stock on Monday. You would then get paid out on August 22nd. So it's about a, uh, not too long out, same month. And looking at 
just the price and yield, we can see that the yield greatly outweighs or outvalues right now the price. So if you buy this one just off the value, you're getting it at a great yield on cost of 2.54 starting yield for a price of $40.95. Now looking at the price in comparison to its 200 day moving average and 50 day moving average, you can see that this one normally trades above the 200 day moving average here for the year but there are periods where it has broke below that 200 day moving average. Here recently with rising interest rates, you're gonna see a lot of these financials have been hammered because of it. And this stock here is trading both below the 50 day and 200 day moving average. So this is a value opportunity as well, both in yield and in simple moving average there. Next, we'll take a look at their price in comparison to price of sales and price the book. Price the book, you want all financials right around a 1.5 right around there so this one is a healthy price of book their price of sales is you know at a 5.1 this would seem a little bit high you're going to see other financials have around a three or four uh, so this one maybe their sales has been uh, let's see their sales has been declining and their price has remained the same or their sales have remained the same this was trending sideways similar to their price so their price has gone down and their their price to sales ratio has gone slightly down so they're staying right line. it's been kind of trending sideways there for quite a while it looks like right around October 2017 it really hasn't gone anywhere besides sideways due to rising interest rates so that is price price to book and price to sales return on invested capital Many investors say that a return of seven to ten percent would be considered healthy here is a seven or seven to 10% or higher. 10% is some minimum and they always want higher. So here 7.75 not quite meeting that uh, meeting that minimum rule of at least 10%. So there are other financial institutions out there that do meet the 10% rule. I think we went over a couple of them last week. So we want a 10% here, not quite there. And nothing else is here is going to display here. So that is Columbia Banking System sticker symbol C O L B. Next we have BBNT. So this one's had dividend growth for the last six years since back in 2012. Payout ratio of 40.6. Its price and dividend for the year. It's currently trading at a yield of 3.19. So this is way up here. So yield is over the price. You're getting a very high yield on cost for its current price. This is because, again, financials recently increased their dividends by a nice number here. They went from 33 cents to 37 cents to 40 cents, all within just a few quarters. Plus they had a special payout here of four cents per share. It's a very healthy dividend payout there, very healthy increases due to deregulation of you know, the financials and good bond opportunity for a yield on cost. Now, if we look at their price in comparison to their price to book, price of sales, again, we want that 1.5 price to book, so that meets it there. Their price of sales, that's a healthier number there at 3.5. And we're moving down the list here, looking at price in comparison to its 250 day moving average. Here we can see that this company moves more with the 50 day moving average and it doesn't break below the 200 day moving average that often. You can see here back in August time frame of 2017 it did break below both the 50 and 200 broke below the 50 here and a couple points earlier in 2018 but generally trades above the 50 day it has recently broke below both the 50 and 200 day moving average with rising interest rates and financials kind of being stalled out lately due to um, the regulations that were passed on them rising interest rates and plus what just happened they did the stress test I would you know, before investing in any company, I would want to research whether the institution passed the stress test or failed. But these are all looking pretty strong as far as financial metrics go. So uh, it is at a good value for yield over cost or yield over price, and current price is below 250 day moving averages. Next, we want to look, we already looked at price to book, price to sales, return on invested capital. This is only at a 5.01, where else? whereas the Columbia Bank Corp was slightly higher at a 7.75. And I believe we already did the ex-dividend. August 9th, that is next Thursday. You'd have to buy this one on Wednesday or prior. You would then get paid out on September 4th. So quite a while there until you would get paid out. 
Next, moving on to Apple. Apple's in third here due to dividend growth for just the last five years, but they hadn't paid dividends prior to 2013. So they are dividend growth for the last five years, healthy dividend increases as well. Payout ratio very low at 25.6. If we take a look at their price and dividend yield, you can see that the price greatly outweighs the current dividend yield. This shows a 1.34. They recently increased their payout, so they're now at a 1.53. They increased it from 63 cents per share to 73 cents per share. So that's a very healthy dividend increase. If we bring out our handy dandy calculator and we punch in the current dividend payout which is 0.73 subtract the previous and divide by the previous of 0.63 that's a 15 percent dividend increase so from from last year's to this year's that's a 15 percent my my calculator kind of bugged out there because my fingers hit the wrong buttons but to do the math you do uh, current which is 0.73 minus the past divided by the past multiply it by 100 to get a percentage, and you get in a 15.87% gain over the last dividend payout of last year. So very good there as well, but here, not a value buy as far as yield over price because uh, 1.53, I would say it's right about average now, just due to that recent increase in their payout. It's right there with the price where it should be. Now, moving on to price in 250 day, you can see that Apple rarely ever drops below that 200 day moving average. If you had bought this back in February of 2018, that would have been the opportune time. I believe it did break into the 150. I bought it at 163 in both mine and my wife's portfolio sometime in this time frame. And great buying opportunity. Very rare to see Apple. As you know, earnings today came out. Apple beat earnings, you know, grew substantially in the after hours. It's going to really help out the S&P 500 move forward into a new high. So very rarely that this company falls below its 200-day. It does trend generally above its 50-day moving average and does break sometimes below that 50-day. That's you know, where you can invest here and there, you know, the normal investing to average in. Now, if you want to buy chunks of Apple, that's where you would wait for that 200 day breaks. And then you would buy chunks of Apple there at those times. So not a good value buying opportunity at that point for yield over price because it's price over yield and 250 days trading above. Next, we look at their price of sales, price of book. This is a growth stock. So you're going to see a very high price in comparison to its actual book value because they sell they probably don't uh, let's see price the book value of the company that seems generally a little bit high but their price is at a high point has been climbing up very very quickly so that i would say that's pretty healthy and right along as far as normal here da, 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 da. so the price of the company itself of the, the stock has been rising, whereas the book value of the actual company itself hasn't really grown as far as much, but they're just because they're taking in and creating so much revenue, net income, and just building up that free cash flow and their services, people are more willing to invest in this company, driving up the price of the stock, whereas maybe the book value of the company hasn't increased lately, but they're looking forward to this becoming more of a passive long-term uh, you know, uh, income producing stock. Price of sales looks right along the line there. So that is price, price of book, price of sales. Next, we look at the return on invested capital. This has a huge 21.6 return on invested capital. You can see back when they began to become a dividend stock, not a growth company, you can see that the return on invested capital did decline. This is because they, be they became a dividend paying stock here right around this time frame 2013 looks like they started increasing and paying out those dividends so they kind of transitioned from a straight growth company into a dividend paying company so a lot of the invested capital wouldn't be reinvested back into the company it would be paid out to their shareholders so that did decline here but it's still at a solid 21.6 and cash conversion cycle you like to see this number in the negative that means that they're turning your invested money and you know, their all all, the, all of their investments 
they're taking negative days to turn that into cash flow. So they're just pumping out products and services and just making profit left and right. It doesn't take them any number of days. Negative numbers are absolutely awesome. So good numbers there for Apple. So X did in for Apple August 10th. That is next Friday. You would have to buy this stock on Thursday or prior. Again, not a value buying opportunity from what I saw here. August 16th is your pay date, so very quickly to get paid out. And that is Apple moving on here to Washington Federal. We have four years of dividend growth since back in 2014. Healthy payout ratio. Pri oh, X dividend is on August 9th. That's next Thursday. Got to buy it on Wednesday or prior. You then get paid out on the 24th of August. So Washington Federal here. First, taking a look at their price and yield for the year. Yield is going to be over the price. If you take a quick look here at all of these financial institutions, I only saw one that's currently trading with a price over yield. So Washington Federal, yield over price. Investor Bank Corp, yield over price. People's Bank Corp, yield over price. Great Western Bank Corp, yield over price. And Brookline Bank Corp. Here's the only one with a price over the yield. And it's just been a nice steady increase there. Uh, it doesn't have much of a drop off besides lately. And they could just be expecting an interest raise. So maybe some investors are selling off, capturing some of their profits that they recently took. But moving back to Washington Federal, we're not going to look at a lot of these other financials yield over price because they're all going to be yield over price because financials have been coming down. So instead, we're going to look at their price to book, price to sales. And we'll see price to book, 1.4. That's healthy. Price to sales a little high at 5.6. If we take a look at their price in 200-day, 50-day, we're going to see this is above the 50-day moving average but below the 200-day moving average. So yield on cost, you're getting it at a 2.15, which is above the price right now. And you're buying it. If you were to buy into the stock, you would get it below the 200-day, but above the 50-day moving average. Financials, I am just, I don't pick up financials right now. It's really tough. Unless you're buying an ETF, I would suggest buying an ETF if you want to get into financials. Instead of trying to pick, you know, any, any, money mo with financials, pick an ETF. Uh, XLF is a good financial ETF. Uh, Investor Bank Corp here. Uh, let's see what else. Do we, we're, we're not going to have... The cash conversion, we can see return on invested capital, 4.59, so pretty low there. Investors, Bancorp, 2.65, so even lower here. Yield of a price, we already know what that's going to be. Yield's currently over the price. Let's go ahead and bring this in. Investors, Bancorp, three years of dividend growth, payout ratio at 46.8. August 9th, which is next Thursday, you would have to buy this one on Wednesday or prior to be eligible for that payout on August 24th price compared to its 250 day moving averages we can see here for the year that the current price is twelve dollars and fifty two cents which is greatly below both its 200 and 50 day moving averages whereas its financials if we look at their financials here their revenue and income free cash flow over the last just five years recently they are looking a little you know kind of coming down but Five years, still pretty positive. About let's see, five. That's about 2.3, 2.6% on average per year for their for their net income, and slightly higher here for about 18. What 10? Five by 10, 50 by six by 10, six by five. Oh, can't do my math right now. Uh, let's see here. Continuing on. So investors, Bank Corp. Price to book, price to sales, we're looking for a 1.5 for that price to book. Actually pretty low at a 1.2, so you're buying price for value almost at a reasonable price there. Price to sales, maybe could it be possibly high? Maybe they don't have as high as sales, but you're getting it at a pretty good price in comparison to book value. Generally, you can see here with time, the stock generally trades here at, you know, touching the bar here, what's that bar? 4.0, uh, probably a little higher, maybe 4.5, but still generally can't, has been coming down here for the year. You're getting it at the lowest point right now as far as price of sales. Now, invest return on invest capital. We already saw that, 2.65. Moving on. So this is not a financial institution. This is Skywork Solutions. This is a semiconductor. I know there's another YouTuber out there who has talked about this. I believe this is Jeremy. 
uh, has talked about Skyworks Solutions working with Apple, and I think he's a shareholder of this one. So Skyworks Solutions, three years of dividend growth since back in 2015, very healthy payout ratio of 23%. Ex-dividend date is August 6th. That, that is next Monday. You'd actually have to buy the stock this Friday or prior to get paid out on August 28th. And they're currently priced here at... $94.58 for the year. Dividend is trading above right now. Looks like they just increased their dividend payout, which is why this shows a 1.61 and this shows a 1.35. So if we scroll down here towards the bottom, we're going to see that they increased their dividend from $0.32 cents per share to $0.38 cents per share. That is why this shows a 1.61. So this is actually way up here. If you buy the stock right now with a yield on cost, you're getting it at a 1.61 yield on cost, priced at $94. I could see the stock coming back up into the $104 range pretty soon, just based off the valuation there. So good buy there. 200 day, 50 day, how is it trading for the year? It is currently below both the 200 day and 50 day moving averages. You can see this one does go up and down quite hard. It dropped from roughly $114, $115, all the way down to $96, uh, $95, rose back up, fell back down even lower, broke past its its um, its support level, quickly recovered there. That would be pretty pretty rough there to see a huge decline such as that. Interesting there. Wonder what news drove that down, but investors jumped up on it very quickly and it rose above the 85 to 95 to 100 break you know to 100 point there interesting there to see I, I would want to research why this one fell so fast so quickly there you know that's a huge huge decline but right now currently trading below both uh, yield and you know yield is over the price and price is currently below both 50 and 200 day moving average seems like a great buying opportunity there more upside than downside and taking a look at their price to book and price to sales. What? Oh, there we go. You're getting it at a pretty healthy. You're actually getting this at the lowest point right now. Not quite the lowest. Here would have been the lowest right in these time frames here. But still, you're getting it at a great bond opportunity. You're buying this at a 4.1 price to book and a 4.5 price to sale. So this is a growth company. So as we move down into the return on invested capital, you're probably going to see right along the lines with Apple. So 22% return on invested capital. So turning out money there and cash conversion cycle, semiconductors. So it takes a while for their products to actually get integrated into these devices that are being sold. So Alexa, the uh, basically anything with voice, you can talk to it, it responds, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it takes a while for the products to get sold off, 101 days there. But if we were to probably bring in one of its competitors or its um, comparables, it would probably be right along line there. I believe NU, MU is another semiconductor stock. So pretty, pretty close, pretty close there as far as uh, cash conversion cycle. So that is Skywork Solutions. Pretty sure we covered that pretty well. People's Bancorp here, two years of dividend growth since back in 2016. X dividend is August 7th. That is next Tuesday. Have to buy this one on Monday or prior. You would then get paid out on August 20th. We can quickly see here, why is it not showing me? Price and yield for the year. This one's trading with a yield. This one shows 2.71. Again, it's that time of the year. They're increasing dividends so they increase their dividend payout from da, 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 26 cents to 28 cents here they were at 17 cents 20 cents 22 cents 26 cents 28 cents a huge leaps and bounds there as financials have been deregulated they can unload more money to their shareholders hopefully they keep money in the back and they're able to continue paying out during times of pullback because here they cut that dividend that's with all financials you won't find very very few financials he continued raising dividends through the crash i believe a couple weeks ago we did find one financial that had been paying out dividends for some 30 plus years i forgot what the ticker symbol was but interesting company there uh price and yield so yield over price good value buying opportunity there price is 
trading below the 50-day moving average, but not quite below the 200-day moving average. It doesn't fall below the 200-day moving average very often, but it normally trades right along the line with that 50-day moving average. So if you can see it, if you see it break below the 50-day, that's generally a safe buying opportunity. Now, if you see it break below the 200-day moving average, there's very few instances of it, but that would be the best buying opportunity for the stock. You can see over the long term, the stock, you know, it it does go through these hard times right here. It was, a uh, what, 2009, it came down hard. It was in recovery mood for three years, and then since that point has been on the up and up, moving up over the last several years there. And pretty sure we already covered their price to book, price to sales. No, we did not. Okay, so again, price to book right around that 1.5 or below. It's healthy. And sales in that 3.0 range, so healthy there as well. Return on invested capital, 4.76. So not, it's not like a growth company. It's a financial institution. Uh, there are still financial institutions out there that are at a 10%. Those are growing companies. This one here is pretty consistent, looks like. Recently, as of coming out of that hole, has been pretty consistent around 3.5 average over the last several years. And no cash conversion cycle. Same with these other ones. We won't even bother covering that here in these next ones. Next, we have Great Western Bank Corp. Taking a look at their price and dividend yield for the year. Again, yield of a price, it's pretty known. 200 day and 50 day here. It's trading below the 50 day, but slightly higher than the 200 day moving average. This one has two years of dividend growth since back in 2016. You can see here 2016, what had happened. Oh, so they recently just started paying out dividends. So not a whole lot. If you're a dividend growth investor, a DGI, you're not really interested in the stock. You're more looking for stocks you can hold for 10, 15 plus years, have that dividend increase and just safely know that when you, you know, you're ready to retire, you can live off those dividends and not have to worry about the dividend getting cut or the company stalling, not paying dividends. So not a really good DJI investment there. Maybe short term, one to two years. So that is what Great Western, let's see, price to book, price to sales. We want these, again, right around 1.5 or below. This is slightly high for a financial for price in comparison to its sales. So maybe their sales aren't so good. And return on invested capital, 6.38. Interesting there, pretty high as far as one of the higher financials that we covered. And last stock tonight, this is Brookline Bank Corp, ticker symbol BRKL, savings and loans, no payout ratio at all. This one has been paying out dividends for quite a while, just has not increased dividends. That's because they don't increase dividends. They pay out that constant nine cents per share, even during times of recession and pullbacks. So here you can see that they didn't pull it, cut it or anything. They just held through. They actually did a stock split 11 for five. So they basically doubled, doubled and then some of your stocks there and paid out nine cents per share and had those special dividend payouts. So this is a really interesting financial institution that's been paying out dividends since, you know, healthy dividends since back in 2001 and just has been paying out consistent. This is a consistent paying out stock even during these downturns. This could be a good one to hold if you just want something steady, but not looking for those yearly increases. X dividend is on August 9th, which is next Thursday. Got to buy it on Wednesday or prior. You would then get paid out on the 24th of August. So looking at price and yield, we already saw this one has a price above the yield because it's done very nice, nice lately. It has a higher dividend yield over on dividend.com because they recently increased their dividend. Oh, look at that. They recently did increase their dividend. Normally, they pay out $0.09 cents per share for the last several decade, and they just increase it to $0.10 cents per share. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. What else? Let's take a look at their price to book. Price to sales, 1.6. That's pretty good still. A little high on the price of sales. Uh, nothing to be alarmed there. And return on invested capital. Whoop, there we go. 
3.66, not amazing. Again, just the financial institution, pretty common for these financial institutions, right around that 3 to 5% range. You're not going to see a lot of financial institutions that are just growing their invested capital. They're, you're, they're not going to have a high return on invested capital. So that is all the stocks. So all the financials besides Brookline, Bancorp, look like they were trading with a yield above the price and the price currently either below the 50 day or the 200 day or somewhere in that line but again doesn't mean that all financials are worth investing in right now i think financials are very risky i myself wouldn't hold any financial um you know for the long term just as many of them don't have that record that dividend growth investors are really looking for I think I believe Skyworks Solutions and Apple are both great looking companies, but they're not value buying opportunities right now. You can see Skyworks Solution is the only one of these that is not a financial institution that did have a yield and it was actually pretty high here at 1.61 due to them raising their dividend payout. So if I were to choose one of these stocks currently to invest in, that was not a financial and was not Apple because Apple is currently trading with a price over the yield price over the 200 day, 50 day. I would choose Skyworks Solutions to take a further look at. Doesn't have a whole lot of dividend growth history since back in 2015. And that is when they begin paying out dividends. So we really don't know what they do during times of recession. Do they pull, do they pull it back? Do they continue to grow it? They have a very healthy payout ratio. And if they continue to work with Apple, we can see Skyworks Solutions pay and grow their dividend during times of recession. So I'll leave that up to you guys. Let me know in the comment section below of these stocks here on the left-hand side, Columbian Banking System, BB&T, Apple, Washington Federal, Investors Bank Corp, Skyworks Solutions, People's Bank Corp, Great Western Bank Corp, and Brookline Bank Corp. Which one looked like the best value to buy? Do you agree with Skyworks Solutions at a great value buy right now? If not, let me know in the comment section below. And of course, if you are brand new to the channel, I do make stock market and investment videos weekly. So consider subscribing for future videos. If you guys have any suggestions on these stocks with activities next week, let me know in the comment section below. If you did like the video, of course, hit the thumbs up below. Subscribe to the channel. If you have not yet subscribed, I always appreciate your guys' comments. So if you have any questions, any comments at all, let them uh, leave them in the comment section below and I'll, I will always reply back to you guys. As a friendly disclaimer, I am not a financial investor myself, a financial advisor, or a tax professional. The information is provided as my opinion for entertainment and fun. This is not investment advice. This is just me as a financial investor myself trying to help others make the money work for them. And of course, thank you guys for tuning in. I will see you next time. If you guys did like the video, let me know in the comment section. If you guys didn't like the video, let me know what I could do to improve these videos. Thank you guys. I will see you next time. Have a good day. Bye.